Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn and hope that you had a wonderful July 4th and a good holiday. And yet, as uh, I counsel with so many people and talk with people through Hope is Here ministry, I know a lot of people are hurting. And maybe that's where you're at today. And the good news is, is that your Heavenly Father, He wants to comfort you when you're hurting. I'm so thankful in a world that's constantly changing, that Hebrews chapter 13 Verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I want to talk to you today and tomorrow and possibly even Thursday uh, about how you can expect comfort in every season of life. You know, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it talks about there's just different seasons, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to dance, a time to mourn. And, you know, we all just go through all the seasons of life. And maybe you're in that winter season where it's just life's really hard. It's dark. It feels cold. It just seems like all gray skies, even though it's sunny and 95 degrees out here in central Kentucky. You're you're just your heart and your mind are just heavy. And uh, you just are like, God, where are you? you at maybe that's where you're at today and the good news is is that God wants to speak to you today because he loves you as his son as his daughter and I am so glad that you're listening today to hope is here in fact uh, man I want to encourage if you've been blessed by any of these programs share them with somebody else Uh, it's always just such a blessing to me when somebody contacts me through a email or through a message on our Facebook page, Hope is Here, and just says, hey, I was so blessed by this program, and I shared it with my son. Uh, Somebody shared that they recently did that, who's in medical school, or somebody just said, you know, I've been dealing with depression and anxiety, and I've I've shared this with somebody else that I know is struggling right now, and it really blessed them. So I want to encourage you, you can go to our website, hopeishere.today, and share these 14-minute programs. Uh, You'll see the podcast. We have over a 1,000 programs, have many wonderful guests and i hope that you'll take advantage and maybe uh i know sometimes some people like to listen to the program uh two and three times because you're like me maybe you just you need encouragement a lot and i've listened to several sermons and podcasts uh people that have blessed me spiritually and helped keep my spiritual tank filled so i want to encourage you to do that also but we're gonna be hanging out in second corinthians chapter one verses one through ten. Second corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. So if you've got your Bible or app uh, on your uh, device, uh, you want to turn to that, give you time. But I'm going to read it here as you're looking at that. It says, this letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. And from our brother Timothy, I'm writing to God's church in Corinth and to all of his holy people throughout Greece. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. You know, I love that Paul, uh, who wrote more of the books in the New Testament of the Bible than anybody else, a lot of them are letters that he wrote to churches and people. Uh, so often he would start them with saying, uh, offering you Jesus Christ, grace and peace. And I don't know anybody that couldn't use a little grace in their life. And maybe you're also, uh, you know what, I need some of that peace too, Greg. And I'm so thankful that our Heavenly Father offers that freely. And it's one of the things just is my prayer each week on Hope is Here and each day uh, with our programs that people experience hope and grace in their lives and peace. And I say it all the time, but I feel like today somebody else needs to hear it that Quit being so hard on yourself. Quit being so hard on yourself and forgive yourself. Um, Because that's the number one thing I've learned doing ministry 20 years now is that people are harder on themselves than God is. In Romans chapter 8, verse 1 says, For now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So friends, if you're a follower of Jesus and you've asked for forgiveness The Bible says as far as the east is to the west that God remembers it no more after you ask for forgiveness. And maybe you fell back in that sin that you've asked for forgiveness for. But I want to remind you again, we get a fresh 24 hours every day, a fresh start. Lamentations chapter 3 verses 22 and 23 says that God's mercies are new and fresh every morning 
and great is God's faithfulness. So maybe today's the day that you're like, you know what, I'm not going to drink today. I am not going to uh, look at pornography again. I'm not going to use my credit card. Uh, I'm going to try to eat healthy. I'm going to drink maybe something simple. Just I'm just going to drink water today and not after I finish my coffee here at uh, breakfast uh, this morning. Even maybe listen to this at lunchtime to say, you know what, the rest of the afternoon and evening, I'm just going to drink water and stay hydrated and do something healthy for your body. I'm so thankful that because of God's grace and peace that Paul talked about here in the first couple of verses of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, that God offers grace and peace every day for us in a fresh start. It goes on to say in 2 Corinthians chapter, I'm sorry, verse 3 in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. I'm going to repeat that one more time. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. Friends, you need to know today that you may be looking for comfort, uh, you know, in just all the wrong places. <laughs> there used to be a song, show them age now, but a movie back in the 80s called, and it had a hit song on it called Looking for Love and All the Wrong Places. Uh, can't remember the name of the movie. John Travolta was in it. And I think Deborah Winger might have been the female actress that was the star of it. But, uh, you know, maybe you're looking for peace in all the wrong places. And I'm so thankful that God said, hey, I'm waiting here with open arms for you. And I am your source of comfort. Not another person, not your spouse, not in your children, your grandchildren, not in your job, not in your bank account, not in your health, not in where you live, um, not, not in how many people like your social media post. God said, I want to be your source of comfort today. And I'm so thankful what Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Isn't that so great to know that Jesus, he understood. He knew that we would get tired at times, that we would get fatigued mentally, emotionally, and physically. And Jesus said, you know what? When you get to that point, maybe it's all three of those, mentally, emotionally, and physically. You're just like, man, I'm exhausted. And Jesus said, I knew that would happen. So that's why I'm saying to you, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, it, I will give you rest. It goes on to say in verse 4 of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, God comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others when they are troubled. We will be able to give them the same comfort that God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. Even we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation for when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same things that we suffer. We are confident that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in the com comfort that God gives us. You know, friends, I love there, just in those four verses, the word comfort is listed seven different times. You know, God's God knows sometimes I lose focus. I don't pay attention. Uh, just honestly, I can be a little slow at times. And maybe you're like that too. And yet I'm thankful God in his grace and his mercy says, you know, Greg, I want to make sure you know that I am a God of comfort. So I'm going to put it seven times <laughs> in verses three through seven, just so you know that I am a God of comfort. It's kind of like Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And that one verse there, God has the word plans, not once, not twice, but three times. And I've shared that before on Hope is Here, but I tell you, it was just revolutionary when I saw that, that God's got a plan for Greg Horn's one and only life, not my siblings, not my friends, not my other family members, uh, you know, not my coworkers, not my neighbors uh, at the time when I was married, not my spouses, you know, just for my one and only life. 
and his plan is unique, and it's different for each of us. And somebody listening today, I believe you need to hear this. Uh, God's just saying, you know, just bloom where you're planted. Bloom where you're planted. Somebody gave me that. It was on a magnet and not very masculine, but uh, it had some flowers and said, bloom where you're planted after I went almost $2 million in debt overnight uh, in Cynthia after the flood with my grocery store back in 1997. And I put that on there. And every morning when I went to uh, get my coffee, I like to, while I'm waiting for it to brew, uh, have a bottle of water and drink on it. And every morning I would see that. And just say, you know what, even though I'm $2 million in debt and, you know, don't know how I'm ever going to get out of this, uh, I'm just going to bloom where I'm planted here in Cynthiana, Kentucky. And God, just uh, do what Psalm 118 verse 24 says. This is the day the Lord has made. I shall be glad and rejoice in it. And maybe today the reason you don't have peace and you need some comfort is because you're playing that old compare game. And God's just like, hey, don't compare your life to anybody else's. Just bloom where you're planted today. Just do the best with what you've got. And don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you do have. Remember, God's a God of miracles. If Jesus can feed 5,000 people with two fish and basically five biscuits, <laughs> okay, five small loaves of bread, I mean, come on. And after they got done serving, after, you know, he blessed it and they served it, they even took up leftovers. I mean, are you kidding me? And so often as I look back in my life, I used to focus on what I didn't have instead of what I did have. And then occasionally I would have a mature moment as a follower of Jesus and to say, all right, God, here's what we've got. You're going to have to bless it and going to have to make it work. And guess what? He always did. Uh, he just, I know, sometimes sets up in heaven and goes, Greg, oh, ye of little faith. Kind of like Jesus with the guys in the in the boat and the storm came and they woke him up and he got up and told the sea to calm and the waves and, you know, and just kind of looked at him, you know, oh, ye of little faith. And you know what? I'm glad to know that I'm like the disciples. Sometimes I struggle with my faith, yet I also want to learn from them and I want to be a person of greater faith. And that's my desire when you listen to this 14-minute program, that you know the Bible says if God is for us, who can be against us? And friends, often we'll have somebody who wants to get in the way of the hopes and plans and dreams that God has for your one and only life. But remember, greater is he that is in you than is in the world. And the Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus in Romans 8, 37. In Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But don't let fatigue wear you down mentally, emotionally, and physically where you want to give up. Because remember what Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 says, Do not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. And I do believe that Satan's one of his greatest tools is discouragement. But remember, friends, Jesus is for you. And he took a horrific death on a cross. And when he died, he said, Father, it is finished. And so that's when we get in tough seasons in life. I want to remind you, third day, the tomb was empty. And we got to quit living sometimes like it's Saturday. You know, Jesus died on the cross. They buried him. We're like, oh, the followers of Jesus, like, what are we going to do now? I want to remind you, the tomb was empty and that hope was alive because Jesus was alive. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but I hope you'll join us again tomorrow as we'll talk about expecting comfort through all the seasons in our life. And if you've been blessed by this program, I hope you'll share it with somebody else. I'm Greg Horn, and this is Hope Is Here.